this time, I'm summarizing the structure of scientific revolutions by Thomas Kuhn. Now, this book is making the claim that the way we typically think of science, how science is taught in the textbooks, is completely wrong. Now, this book's the short book, 200 pages, and it was published in 1962. And when it came out, it caused a great deal of controversy. Now, what I'm going to do, because it's such a controversial book, is I'm going to start by summarizing it as objectively as I can, and then I'm going to give my thoughts on it. So first of all, it was written by Thomas Kuhn, who had a PhD in physics, and then, having completed his PhD, went on to become a historian and philosopher of science. So this is not a science book, in the sense that he's not talking about empirical evidence, and experiments and so on, what he's doing is he's giving historical examples and he's saying, wait a second, looking at the history of science, science doesn't actually work the way we say it does in the textbook. And the book is making two main claims. So first of all, what is this textbook idea of science that he's discussing? Well, it's based on the philosophy of logical positivism, which is that science is cumulative, slowly, gradually moving toward the complete objective truth. Here's the textbook idea of science. What scientists are doing is they're trying to discover things, trying to find out which claims are true and false. They collect some data. Then they interpret the data. And then now you have a fact. And what you do with that fact, you add the fact onto the pile of facts, like bricks in a building. So now we have this tower of facts which is getting closer and closer toward the complete objective truth. That is how science is typically taught in the textbooks. This is how we generally think of science. And Kuhn is saying, no, that's not how it works. And he's making two claims. The first claim is that facts are not enough. So first of all, if scientists are just trying to collect data and generate facts, then what's going to happen is that different scientists are going to be looking in all different directions and you'll end up with a mess of facts which are unconnected to each other. And as well as that, any set of data can be interpreted in multiple different ways. And so the fact doesn't tell you how to interpret it. Here's an example. Let's imagine that we find a correlation between A and B. People who score higher in A tend to score higher in B. Well, there are multiple different ways of interpreting that. One interpretation is that A causes B. Another is that B causes A. Or they both cause each other. Or they're both caused by C. Or maybe there's no relationship and it's just a false positive. And so any amount of data can be interpreted in multiple different ways. And so if we follow that textbook idea of science, then all that's going to happen is we're not going to get a a tower of knowledge moving toward the truth. We're just going to get this big mess of unconnected facts interpreted in different ways. Kuhn refers to this as mere facts, which does not constitute science. And so facts are not enough. What scientists need is what Kuhn refers to as a paradigm. Now, he uses the word paradigm in two different ways. One is as a set of examples of how the science should be performed. The the problems that you complete at the end of the chapter in the textbook, which shows you these are the different situations in which you can apply these different equations. But more broadly, a paradigm refers to a shared interpretation. So all the scientists are interpreting the data in the same way, which tells you what exists. It tells you what you should study and how you should study it. So here's an example of a paradigm in psychology. Behaviorism. The behaviorist paradigm said that behavior can be explained in terms of stimulus and response. So environmental stimulus comes in and then you're kind of a blank slate. So everything you know is from your environment and then behavior comes out. So that's like a Pavlovian or operant conditioning, for example. And then it has the methodological side. We're only going to study behavior. So we're not going to give people questionnaires about their feelings. We're not going to study genetics, for example. And also the conceptual side, 
we're only going to talk about behavior and the things we can measure. We're not going to even think about thoughts and feelings because that's outside the paradigm. And so this is a shared interpretation and framework for doing science. And then once you have the paradigm, you have what Kuhn refers to as normal science. Now, for Kuhn, normal science is not about discovering things. And especially, it's not about trying to prove theories wrong. Normal science is the process through which researchers are trying to fill in the gaps. So we have this paradigm, which you could think of as the outside of the jigsaw puzzle. So every time scientists get a new fact, they interpret it as a piece of the jigsaw. So what scientists are trying to do in normal science are two things. One, they're trying to apply that paradigm, that framework to new situations. What else can we explain in terms of stimulus response? And they're also trying to explain things that they already know in greater in greater mathematical precision. So it's essentially a gap filling exercise. The paradigm is not questioned. We begin with the paradigm and then we just try to fill in the gaps. This takes us to Kuhn's second claim, which is that paradigms limit perception. So first of all, once you have this paradigm, scientists are going to limit what they study to the things that support the paradigm. So if our idea is behavior is in terms of stimulus and response, we're not going to study things that disagree with that. We're not going to study language and we're not going to study genetics because that disagrees with and is outside the paradigm. What you can get is what you call an anomaly. This is when you have a finding, a result, which doesn't match the paradigm, which does not fit in the jigsaw. The textbook idea of science would say that if you have facts which don't fit the theory, if you take the theory, the paradigm, you throw it away. Well, Kuhn says that's not actually what happens. What scientists do is if they get a result that doesn't match their paradigm, then either they'll wait a few a few years or a few generations well future scientists will be able to figure it out or they come up with an ad hoc justification an excuse basically to try to fit the data into their existing model of the world before kuhn wrote the structure of scientific revolutions 10 years before that he wrote the copernican revolution which was about how scientists went from studying um, astronomy, thinking that the sun went around the earth, to the other way, thinking that the earth went around the sun. So the Ptolemaic model, the Ptolemaic model was that the earth is in the center of the universe and the sun and the moon and the planets all go around the earth. And it certainly looks, if you look at the, at the sky, that the sun goes around the earth in a circle, and the moon goes around the earth in a circle. But then there were some problems with this model that were discovered. Turns out that if you look at the, um, if you look at the planets, such as Mars, it goes across the night sky, it moves this way, then it moves back, then it moves this way, then it moves back. It doesn't appear to be going around the world in a circle. So here's what didn't happen. Scientists did not take the Ptolemy model and throw it away. They didn't reject it. What they did instead is they twisted around the, the facts in such a way that it fitted with the data. So what scientists said instead, what astronomers said instead was, well, maybe these planets going back and forth, maybe they're going around the Earth in spirals. And so what's happening is that scientists are essentially making excuses to support the theory that they already have. Well, if you have a lot of these anomalies and they build up, you can end up with a period of crisis in which, oh no, our existing model of the world doesn't, our existing of the mo model of the world doesn't explain these anomalies. We've tried, but it's been hundreds of years and we can't explain why these planets are going back and forward. Well, what happens then is what Kuhn refers to as a crisis. And that's a period of what Kuhn calls extraordinary science, in which scientists now start to study all different theories, different ideas they wouldn't have come up with before, 
Well, maybe it's the other way, and the Earth goes around the sun. This is the Copernican model, and that could be a new paradigm. And then scientific revolution is the period in which there's a lot of disagreement and argument between scientists, deciding whether to keep the old paradigm or to take up the new one. And then what could happen as a result of this is a paradigm change or paradigm shift in which scientists, the scientific community goes from one model to another. An example of a paradigm change in psychology was going from behaviorism to cognitivism, which is, in so many words, the idea that the brain is like a computer with inputs and outputs and information processing in between. Because the anomalies in behaviorism was that behaviorism could not explain language. It could not explain why some fears, such as fears of snakes, were easier to um, develop than fear of flowers, for example. And it also couldn't explain perception of how you actually understand what the stimulus is coming in. And so behaviorism couldn't explain these phenomena, and, and so scientists moved to a different paradigm. Now, what I'd like to make very clear is that when scientists go from one paradigm to the other, it's not because of the evidence that when you have two groups of scientists who believe in different things, there's no amount of evidence can get them to change their mind. Because what's happening is they're both looking at evidence that supports their own model. And as well as that, like I said before, the paradigm limits perception. So it's not just that you have a data set and you have multiple ways of interpreting it. It's that you have the data there and you have your model of the world. And so you automatically see the world in terms of that model. You can only see it that way. And therefore, the two different models of the world, the two ideas, are what Kuhn refers to as incommensurable. Right? You can't see both at the same time. You can only perceive one or the other. And so when scientists change from one paradigm to the other, for Kuhn, it's not about facts. It's not about evidence. It's not about logic. It's about the fact that the old paradigm has failed to solve it, the problems that it's set up can't address these anomalies, and so scientists lose faith in the old model and end up turning to the new model. And so what's happening here is that now when you have this new model, this new paradigm, whenever they interpret the data, they perceive and interpret it in terms of this new paradigm, and now they're filling in the dots. And so what's happening is that scientists are going from one model to another to another, but every time you go from one model to another, it destroys much of the knowledge from the old model. So how all this knowledge, all these theories, the planets going around in spirals, that knowledge is destroyed. And so it's not that we're building up toward the objective truth. It's just that scientists are moving from one model to the other with no predestined endpoint. And so science isn't cumulative. They're not trying to prove themselves wrong. They're just trying to prove themselves right. And it's not moving toward the truth. And that is Kuhn's conception of science. OK, so what do I think of this? Well, I'm not a philosopher and I'm not a historian, but I am a scientist and I do teach people how to be scientists. So I'll give you my thoughts. I agree completely with Kuhn's first claim that science requires an interpretation. Every single time you have some data, it can be interpreted in multiple different ways. And so you need some theory, some framework beforehand for how to interpret the data. Otherwise, you can just perform a lot of statistical tests and make the data support any conclusion you like. Now, where I disagree with Kuhn is his idea of incommensurability and, and that paradigms limit perception. So you could imagine that just like anybody else, scientists could have confirmation bias and could be trying to confirm what they already believe. However, I disagree with Kuhn's idea that scientists can only view one theory at a time. So if you look at psychology, for example, we teach you about psychoanalysis and we teach you about the behaviorist and about cognitivism. And presumably in physics, you learn about Newton and Einstein and quantum mechanics. You learn about all these different theories. One of the main skills that you develop in scientific training is the ability to see different models at the same time and therefore to compare them. 
to say which model of the two best fits the data and therefore to get you closer to the objective truth. And so that's where I disagree with Kuhn. Nevertheless, this is a, a very influential book about the philosophy of science. And so that is uh, my summary of The Structure of Scientific Revolutions by Thomas Kuhn.